All right, moving on with our discussion of work. Again, remember, work, force times distance, force times distance. Pretty easy formula. You'll never have to memorize it. So, so far, what we've learned is this work is going to cause a change in energy. So how does energy get changed? Well, the first one that we've looked at is a change in potential energy, and this is the one that we associate with a change in height. Again, that distance that it moves, that's the height that it changes by. So now we want to deal with the second type, and this is a change in kinetic energy. And the change in kinetic energy is going to be associated with a change in speed. Easy enough. Changes height, we're looking at changes in potential energy. Changes in speed, we're looking at changes in kinetic energy. It's kind of basic, you know, if you think about it, it's not too crazy. So um, before we looked at this formula for potential energy, I'm going to use a blue marker now, and potential energy, the force applied was equal to the weight and that distance that it moved was equal to the height. So we have our potential energy formula. Again, none of these formulas ever have to memorize. You just kind of have to kind of make connections between force and force. So the same thing can happen with kinetic energy. And I am not going to go through the big derivation that um, there was another video that your author of your textbook, uh, Paul Hewitt, went through to go over that, um, where it came from. But I will just show you quickly. I'm not going to do all the steps. Promise. No steps. But just this idea. So when we look at a change in speed, because I think it's important to make connections, what causes a change in speed? A net force. And that net force is going to cause an acceleration. Remember Newton's second law? I've seen it before. So what if I want to make this side of the equation look like work? Well, what if I just multiply both sides by d. And that's an algebra thing. So if you do the same thing to both sides, it really doesn't change the equation at all. But what we can recognize immediately, if that if I take the net force times the distance that it moves, that's the same as the work done. And then we get this mad formula over here. It's so mad. But now this is where there's a bunch of algebra that pops in there, and the, the Hewitt video went through it. So basically, it took other definitions that you guys know, like acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. And then it also used this how far equation, one half at squared. And it did a bunch of algebra that I am not, not going to worry about. But the end result was, when you did all this algebra, it turned out, that you could make this side of the equation just by substituting and canceling and all this other stuff result in this equation right here. One half times the mass times the speed squared. And remember, it's just the speed that gets squared, not everything gets squared, just the V. And this is our kinetic energy formula. So kinetic energy is going to depend on the mass. So how big it is means more kinetic energy and how fast it's going. But it is directly proportional to the mass. Here, it's directly proportional to the speed squared. So what do we mean by that whole idea of proportional to the speed squared? Let me just grab another board here. So kinetic energy equals 1 half mb squared. So if I have an object that's moving along at a certain speed here, and it's got a certain mass, well, it's going to have a certain kinetic energy. But what if I take my mass, same mass, but now I have five times the speed, which means five times V. Well, what's going to happen to my kinetic energy? Well, if I put five times V in there and square it, that means I'm going to have a factor of 25 on this side, it means I'm going to have 25 times more kinetic energy. More energy is associated with that speed because it's going faster. And it goes as the square of the speed. So if I, let's say I triple the speed, so three times the velocity, what's going to be the result? I'm going to have nine times more kinetic energy. What if I do eight times the speed? What does that result in? Eight squared? You got it, 64 times more kinetic energy. And the problem with this is, 
if you get into a crash, right, um, that energy has to go somewhere and it goes into the crumpling and the destruction and the amount of force that it takes to make it stop. So the faster you go, it's not a linear relationship. It actually gets increasingly bad news. More energy means more destruction when you need to stop. So that's the big idea between kinetic energy and this whole proportional relationship between the speed squared. So if we go back to our big ideas, oops, got a semi erase there, fix that. So this is everything. So potential energy is going to be mass times gravitational field times the height, that formula, and this change in kinetic energy, we've got a formula for that too. Now, again, you never have to memorize these. They'll always be given to you. But the big idea is just making this connection. If you do work, force times distance, what is it going to cause? It's going to cause a change in energy. What kind of energy is going to change? Well, what is it doing? Is it changing the height? Well, then we're going to see a change in potential energy. Is it changing the speed? Well, we're going to see a change in the kinetic energy. And how are we going to connect this all together? Whoop, I need a bar. We are about to work on the roller coaster. So we've all kind of ridden on roller coasters before, and we want to be able to make that connection that as we go down, this roller coaster, we speed up, we slow down, we see changes in kinetic energy, we see changes in potential energy. We've got one more connection to make before we're ready for the roller coaster, though.